Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Clary Slim. Today I'm going to share with you P5 topic, which is a human and animal reproduction system. Okay, so this is a P5 topic. It's actually relatively quite simple to understand, uh, except that it has a lot of things to memorize, okay, because of the different human parts. It's basically anatomy. Okay, so in this topic, a lot of things to memorize. As long as you can put them in your mind, you can easily answer the questions that follows, okay, especially in section B. All right, let's just run through some of the facts that we need to know over here. So, animals reproduce to ensure the continuation of their species. This is a sentence that you need to memorize, okay, because sometimes they will ask you, why do humans reproduce? So, this will be a very simple answer. Animals reproduce to ensure the continuation of their species. Memorize this sentence. What is the meaning of heredity? Basically, they are trying to test you for your understanding that there is the passing on of characteristics from parents to offspring. So what are the things that is passed on in genes, in a way, in, in other words? It will be, for example, earlobes, okay? uh, dimples, skin color, hair color, eye color, etc. So for plants, they will inherit the sweetness of the fruit, uh, meaning if the parent fruit is sweet, most likely the children fruit will be sweet as well, not real children as in like um, the same the, the seed that comes from the parent tree. Okay, so that same seed that reproduces into a young plant, that one, okay, that's what we're talking about, the same sweetness of the fruit, the color of the flower, the shape of the leaves, etc. Okay, so how does sexual reproduction happen? So there is two different types of sexual reproduction. There is the internal fertilization and there is the external fertilization. Internal fertilization meaning the sperm is released into the female's body. Okay, so that means the male sex cell is released into the female uh, body directly. Okay, so for example, human and most land animals, they do internal fertilization except for a few. Internal fertilization will be for water animals like fish, starfish, frogs, sponges. Okay, these are just examples. Sperm and egg meet outside of the parent's body. That's what external fertilization talks about. Okay, so what are the two ways for reproduction from then on after fertilization is done? They can either give birth to young. Okay, so most mammals except platypus give birth to young. That means they give birth to the, 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 the baby in a way, if you want to say it that way. Okay. So that's giving birth to young. That means straight away they come out, they are uh, 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 very similar to the adult already. Okay, except that they are smaller and uh, um, uh, less mature. So uh, they can also lay eggs. Okay, so uh, lay eggs will be eggs with shell and eggs without shell. So eggs with shell will be, for example, birds, insects, reptiles, they will lay eggs with shells. Those without shells will be those amphibians like fish. Okay, sorry, amphibians or fish. Okay, so uh, another thing that you need to know, embryo get their food from the yolk of the egg. Okay, so this is the important information you need to know. Where do embryo get the food from? They get it from the yolk. Externally fertilized eggs are laid in large numbers because the chances of eggs getting fertilized are less because there's a lot of environmental factors when that happens. Therefore, externally fertilized eggs are laid in large numbers in case they miss it. That's how nature works. Okay, so human sexual reproduction. So the male sexual reproduction, you need to know all the parts uh, and their function. And this is the female reproductive system. And this is the fallopian tube. This is the uterus. This is the ovary, cervix over here, vagina over here. So for male, you will only need to know the penis, okay, the one that's in front, okay, and then the, the, the testis, and then the scrotum that holds it, and the urethra. Okay, so these are the things that you need to know at the primary level. So what do they do? Each testis will be this two over here, these two organs. So they produce sperm. So the question usually will ask you, uh, where is the part that produces sperm? So you will need to say, okay, it's inside the testis. And the scrotum is the bag that protects the testis by hanging it outside the body to keep the temperature down so that the sperms can survive. So they might ask you questions like why do the testes hang outside the body? So the reason is because so that the sperms can survive in a cooler temperature outside of the body. So the penis helps transfer the sperms into the female body. So it's like a, 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 a tool okay, that the male use to inject the uh, sperm directly into the female's body. So the female 
reproductive system will have all these parts that you need to know. So the ovaries produce the eggs, okay, it releases one egg monthly alternatively, okay. So one month here, one month here, one month here, one month here. So it is alternating. Every month it alternates. So fallopian tube will be to guide the mature egg from the ovaries to meet the sperm. Fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube. So where's the fallopian tube? This one over here. So it's either the egg comes out from here, it meets the sperm here, or comes out from here, meets the sperm here. So fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube, either side. It depends on where the egg is found. Okay? The uterus is the womb, and another word for uterus is the womb. It produces the hormones, it produces, it provides an environment, the muscles to hold on to the fertilized egg for the fertilized egg to develop into a baby. So a common question will be, where does the fertilized egg end up in order for it to develop? It will be here, okay? That will be the uterus, the womb, okay? Over here. So, uh. It holds the baby and provides nourishment for the developing fetus for 9 months. So where is the vagina? It will be the birth canal, the passage through which the sperm is deposited. The baby passes out of the mother's body through the vagina, which is over here, this part. Okay, now we learn all the, all the uh, science concepts. Let's look at some of the questions. The questions are not difficult. It is actually quite clear cut. It's just uh, uh, more of um, just for you to regurgitate what are the things that you remember. So, for example, this question, very simple. They ask you what is X. Very simple. The answer is, it is a sperm, right? Okay, then uh, what is Y? The Y is the egg. That's all. That's all you need to know. Okay, very simple. And you get one mark, one mark each like that. So, state the process that is taking place and where it took place. So, the sperm is entering the egg. So, you have to know and you, know, you need to know how to spell as well. So, the name of the process is fertilization. So, where does it take place? Fertilization takes place at the fallopian tube. This is an information that I've told you just now. And you need to know how to spell the word. So, fallopian tube answer over here. Which will be the tube that connects the uh, ovary. Uh, to the to the uterus, okay, over here, this one connects from the ovary to your uterus. This is where fertilization takes place. Just to repeat to you, okay, right. Let's look at this. Um, the diagram below shows the embryos not drawn to scale found in an egg and a seed. So they are trying to compare the plant reproductive uh, uh seed over here and versus the embryo over here. So name the part of the seed that is similar in function to the egg yolk. Okay, remember just now I told you the embryo gets the food from the egg yolk. Okay, so questions like that will ask you. So where is the part that is similar to that of the egg yolk? It will therefore be, if you do remember the plant's reproductive system that you have learned in P4, the seed leaf. Alright, the seed leaf is the part of the seed. Not the leaf, huh? okay? Don't be mistaken by the word leaf. If you've forgotten what is seed leaf, refer to our YouTube video, P4, Chapter 2, The Plant's Reproductive Cycle. Okay, uh, you will understand what is seed leaf. So the seed leaf is actually a part of the seed that provides food for the growing shoot, which functions exactly the same as the egg yolk. It provides food for the embryo in the egg, and the seed leaf provides food for the embryo in the seed, okay, which is actually the shoot. Right, so thus both of them provides food at the infancy stage of the development of the new uh, offspring. Okay, so that's the answer. Let's look at another question. The diagram below shows the cross section of the female human reproductive system. Okay, so what is X? So identify and label X. So, uh, oh sorry, identify and label in the diagram above the part where fertilization usually takes place. Okay, by now you should already know. So where is the part that fertilization takes place? It will be the fallopian tube. You can either highlight this part or you can also highlight the other part over here. Up to you, whichever part that you want to, left or right. Okay, so this is the two parts whereby fertilization takes place. It will be the fallopian tube. So you will need to label it at the side over here. Okay, write down the word fallopian tube. So what is the function of X in the process of sexual reproduction in humans? So in this question, very simple, that is where the fertilized egg uh, develops, right? This is actually an answer that we talked about just now in one of the keywords, right? So part X is where the fertilized egg develops. It rests here and it develops here. That's the answer. 
Okay, let's look at another question. Very, very common question. This is the hereditary question. So this one shows uh, Mr. Bobby Ang's uh, family tree, right? So the family tree, this is Bobby. So Bobby is square, which means all the squares are males. And what is the question here? How many generations are shown in the family tree above? So generation, we'll consider Bobby as one generation. So this is like, for example, daddy, mommy, right? So daddy, mommy, another generation would be the children, correct? So that is two generation already. So two generation and this sibling got married to another guy outside the family. Therefore, he is not exactly linked to Bobby. He's someone from outside the family tree. So after they got married, they gave birth to children. Therefore, that's the third generation already. And the third generation got married to another guy from outside the family tree three and gave birth to another generation okay so how many generations all together one two three four four generations and that's the answer over here answer four how many grandchildren does bobby have Remember, note that is grandchildren not great grandchildren or not children okay so let's count again huh? bobby's children are called children makes uh makes sense right bobby's children over here so who are Bobby's grandchildren? His grandchildren will be children of his children. So therefore, it will be this layer over here. So how many grandchildren does he have? From the daughter, it will be one, two, three, four. Those below will be great grandchildren. So your answer is actually just four. This guy came from outside to marry the granddaughter. Right? So this is only four grandchildren. Answer four. Fiona is Bobby's great-granddaughter, label Fiona inside the family tree. So where is Fiona? Great-granddaughter, remember these are grandchildren. So grandchildren's children will therefore be the great-grandchildren. So Fiona will be here in this circle. This is Fiona, okay? So Bobby suffers from color blindness. This trait affects all his male descendants only. So in total... How many people in the tree above suffer from color blind? Okay, so this is a trick question. Uh, a lot of children will get this wrong reason being they will forget to count Bobby because it says how many people in the tree suffer from color blind. Okay, so let's see uh, if only male descendants get it. So Bobby is one, right? Uh, but Bobby's descendant will include this person over here. This male is not from Bobby. This male is not considered. So under Bobby, so that's one. Bobby is one. This is two. And then Bobby's children, daughter, gave birth to two males. This two will be affected because they have blood ties with Bobby. Right? They will have shared the same genes as Bobby. So assuming that it is passed down to another granddaughter, which skips the daughter and passed down to the male descendants over here as well. Right? Therefore, it will be one, two, three, four, five over here therefore answer is five okay and the last question over here the diagram below shows a sperm okay so which part of the sperm a b or c will fuse with the nucleus of the egg is only part a the rest of the part the tail is actually helping it to propel to swim around to find its way to the egg so answer is a so which part of the sperm only a will fuse with the nucleus of the egg Okay, over here, cross out the parts in the diagram where sperms are produced. It will be this two. The testis produces the egg. So you will label this one with a cross and label this with a cross. Okay, that's all for this topic. Relatively simple, just to memorize all the key stuff and you will be able to score this very easily. Remember all the keywords as well. Okay, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel. Uh, check out our other videos and I uh, hope you like and subscribe. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.